Well, and grab a chair. Now that's a that'll unfold, so that's a blanket for you there. Okay. Uh, tea. I think they might have only put one sugar in it. They got okay. it mixed up. And uh, there's a plain donut there for you. I had a cereal bar, but if you get hungry or anything else, just let me know. Okay. Do you have any? Uh, since noon. You have eaten since noon. Okay. Are you hungry now? I get you a full meal if you want. Okay. Any bacon and eggs, or do you want something else? Too sick to talk. This okay. Is, this is really That's okay. You can listen. And uh, if you have any questions as we go along, there's no issues there at all. Okay? Okay. i got a few things I'll talk to you about. Um, as I told you, my name is uh, uh, Chris. My last name is Lone. I understand your name is Michael. Now, do you go by Mike or Michael? What's your preference? It doesn't matter. Okay. I'll, I'll probably call you Mike. So unless that really offends you, um, just uh, uh, leave it with me. Now, you should have any problems with my name because your middle name, one of your middle names is Christopher, so I know you'll have no, uh, no issues with remembering my name. Uh, how come you got more than one middle name, do you know? Uh, I don't know. It's my uncles and my grandfather. I got uh, three middle names as well. And that's because really, my parents thought I was going to be an only child, so they named me after everybody. So I got named after a grandfather and two uncles, so I know what you're, I know what you're going through there because my initials I get teased about. But uh, I'm going to go over a few things here today. Okay, Mike, uh, like I say, don't be shy. Uh, you'll find I'm pretty relaxed, pretty laid back because I've dealt with this, these types of issues before, okay? Um, I know that uh, earlier tonight that uh, you've had an opportunity to uh, um, have your rights read to you, which you understood, and you understand your caution. You don't have to say anything, okay, to me or any other police officers. And we had an opportunity to speak with the lawyers. So there's no issues for, uh, for any of that. Now, having said that, though, anytime that you have a, uh, a question, all right, don't be shy. You know, uh, I have no issues getting any food there, so if there's something that you want, okay, I'll get you some food. There's no, no problems at all. Like I say, I get that for you in about five minutes. So, um, But my job is, as I mentioned to you, that I'm from what's called the Behavioral Sciences section. And we're talking about the, uh, the missing person one, that Tory Stafford was missing. I know you were following a little bit in the media, and you follow some little bits and pieces that there was Behavioral Sciences people involved, right? And sometimes they were um, criminal profilers. Uh, there's been other members in there as well. Threat assessment, and that's what... Uh, one of my roles is as well. Uh, in threat assessment, what my job is, is to determine the, um, the risk, okay? What's the risk of a certain situation? Now, the situation that we're talking about, is you're gonna find here that there's nothing you're gonna tell me to surprise me, okay, for two reasons. One, I've heard a lot of this stuff before. Uh, the second reason is I'm fortunate enough to know what the, all the case facts are, okay? So uh, what I have to do is assess, is assess what I perceive is, is a threat. So are you gonna go out and kill more people? after this, this situation is done, okay? That's what my job is, to assess, assess threat level, all right? I already know you're, you're responsible for one, for one death, okay? So that's what my job is, is to determine, okay, what's happened here, all right? Um, we're in a situation there now where the investigators have been to the, uh, to the Home Depot in Guelph, okay? And they've been to the scene, uh, the other side of Guelph, okay, where Tori is. Um, so I'm aware of that stuff. I'm aware of what happened leading up to her disappearance. And obviously you were following it in the media as well to see um, obviously the composite of the girl that was involved with you in this and also the, um, the uh, pictures of the vehicles. And I know, I mean, I gotta look at it from your, your, your standpoint as well. It's human nature, right? I mean, you see that the police uh, aren't advertising they're looking for a male subject and they're not advertising they're looking for this gray Honda, right? And they show, they show this van and uh, the reality of it is your vehicle is on the video before that van is anyway. So your vehicle is connected to this through video right from the beginning, okay? And I know it's a pretty good feeling to be involved in something like this and the police don't come near you for over a month, right? Police don't talk to you till May 15th. It's the first time that uh, they come around. So you were feeling pretty comfortable for a little while, okay? So those are the things that I have to, that I have to look at, but um, before we go through all that though, my people just don't wake up one day and decide this is gonna happen, and I know that, all right? So there's a lot of ideas that go in people's heads at the time, and uh, um, if, if I go through, and I, and I have, I go through your history and your background, there's not a whole hell of a lot you've been involved in in life, is there, right? You're completely under the radar, okay? You've flown completely under the radar your whole life. I think you're involved in some, uh, vehicle thefts and stuff, bringing in some vehicles years ago, right, when you were a kid, 
and we've all done stupid stuff. I've never done any of that. I can't look you in the face and say I haven't done it. Well, you already told an officer that you did that, right? No, I didn't cars. say that's what I did. What did you say? I said we went into cars that were unlocked and took things out of them, and that was it. Okay, I used the, okay, I used the term break-in, okay? Now, the reason I say that is back when I was a detective, when you go into a car or a house where it's locked or unlocked, that's a break-in, okay, because you're not supposed to be in there. So that's where that terminology came from, okay, Mike? But uh, anyways, I'm going to go through a few things with you here, all right? Obviously, you're, uh, you're upset by what's going on. You're here for a reason, and right back at the beginning, the investigators and the case manager, the officer in charge, said that I'm going to follow the evidence and go where the evidence leads me, okay? And now you're here because the evidence is, has led the investigators to you. All right, and then I get involved after, after that. There's been people that I work with uh, in behavioral sciences that have been here from the outset of the investigation, but um, really, at this at this point in time, I mean, when I go in and look at uh, your history, there's very little on there. Like I say, you've flown under the radar. You haven't had any major problems with the uh, with the police, okay? But now all of a sudden you're involved in this situation. And it's a serious situation, and it's a scary situation. I'm sure you're you're quite upset and quite concerned about what uh, what's going on here. All right. Now the last one I was involved with, like this, I don't know if you're aware of it, was a girl named Holly Jones in Toronto. When she went missing, and the guy that uh, had abducted her, his name was Michael Breer. And what he he was doing is he was watching on his computer for hours and hours and hours. He was looking at child porn to the point that he decides I want to go try this, and he goes and he grabs Holly does some things to her and then he realizes what am I going to do okay and he panics he doesn't know what to do because she's a witness now and he says if I just let her go she's going to tell on me so he decides that he's not going to let her go all right and all that was from something as simple as watching child pornography for hours on end these things happen okay and we can't say it happened close to home Toronto's not that far from you okay these things happen all the time all right so what I need to do is sit with you um, I already know how, I know the who's, right? Uh, why? I mean, why is up to you, but I can actually probably fill in that blank for you, but that's not what my rule here is. If I'm going to um, assess risk here and see, number one, do you even feel bad about what you've done? That's the first thing I look for. And number two, do I think, okay, he doesn't feel bad, so an attorney's probably going to do this again because he really doesn't care about it the first time it's happened, okay? But I also know that you've probably made some uh, some other choices in life into uh, who you associate with, right? We've all done that. I mean, we've all brought home a girlfriend or a boyfriend or something that uh, people aren't going to approve of, and we've all had friends that our family's not going to approve of. I've done that. We all have. Okay. So that's what we have to sit and uh, sit and look at here. But uh, it, it's uh, uh, one of those things that, like I say, I'm not I'm not at all. Um, upset with you. I'm not mad at you. Um, I don't mind sitting here talking with you. You'll know if I don't want to talk to you because I'll just simply leave, right? And uh, I have no issues with that. But at the same time, you and I need to have open communication. Like, I appreciate you clarifying with me when I comment about a break-in, okay? Because I have to make sure that you understand the terminology I use, and I have to understand the terminology that you're using as well. Now, as I go through this, like I say, there'll be a few things that uh, that I may uh, that I may cover off that you may say uh, I don't understand that. But having said that, um, from from reading about you, this to me seems like it's out of character. No, I could be wrong, right? Um, you may have uh, you may have been planning this for for a long period of time, and you may have thoroughly enjoyed this. And if I'm wrong, then you tell me that, all right? But I also know that we all make mistakes, okay? And that's why pencils have erasers. Okay, because we all make mistakes. It's that simple. Um, spending time with you here, and if I'm wrong, you tell me. But it looks like if you could turn back time, maybe there's a few decisions in life you'd made a little bit different. All right. If I could turn back time for you, Mike, I would. But it's not that simple. Okay. So now you and I have to sit here and face what's happened. Okay. I can sit and tell you what happened. I can take you through the day of her disappearance. Okay. I mean, I've seen the uh, I've seen the video. All right. I know that you didn't do this alone, and uh, but at the end of the day, we got to uh, we got to deal with this situation, okay? Because it's a it's a, a young girl that we got to talk about, and if uh, you and I don't sit and talk about your side, then people will only think the worst, right? It's human nature. 
right? You've done it and I've done it. We always think the worst until we know the facts, okay? So that's what you and I need to sit here and work and discuss and work through. Again, if I'm wrong, you tell me, okay? But I really believe if you could turn back time, you would deal, this, deal with this a little bit different, okay? And there may have been a rush. It may have been exciting for a period of time. But then reality sets in. You have to sit and live with the fact of what's happened here, okay? And that's what we're doing here. We have to sit and deal with what's happened. Now, I can take you to any point in that day when Tori goes missing, from the time she goes missing to the time things get out of hand, all right? And I can outline that to you. And I can outline some of the um, what's called post-offense behavior. So after the offense, some of the behavior that happened there, getting rid of some of the evidence and things like that. Okay, um, your vehicle's been seized, and there's been some steps you've taken to kind of mask or get rid of some of that evidence. You may be successful in some ways, but you won't be successful getting rid of all the evidence and all the DNA because there's not a cleanser out there that'll do that. And I've sat with dozens of people that have tried, okay? There's no magical uh, stain remover out there to get rid of, uh, of DNA. Um, so really at this point, what you have left is your word and your credibility. And people always think the worst, okay, until they know the truth. You do it and I do it. It's human nature. So we're all going to think the worst until we know why this has happened in your mind. And again, if it's something where you're like Michael Briere, where you looked at a lot of child porn and then decided you were going to try it, then that's fine. If it wasn't your idea, then that's fine too. But we can't change what the case facts are, all right? Is there anything that I've said other than that break-in thing that I've got wrong at this point in time? Because I'm breaking it down. Or right. That's fine. You don't have to say if it's wrong or right, okay? Mm -hmm. But you know deep down that it is. And you know deep down that this is your chance to get it off your chest. So you're not sitting there the rest of your life saying, I guess I should have said something, all right? I guess I should have got it off my chest and said my side. Because this is your last chance to do it. The fact that you're here and the fact that uh, um, they've already, uh, um, they know where, where the victim is, okay? And they know your steps. This is it. Do you watch Ultimate Fighting at all? No. You don't watch it? Okay. Um, you have to take the steps now to live the rest of your life, okay? This is what you have to do. You and I need to talk about this, okay? So I've got to determine, as part of my job, when all is said and done here, do I think Mike's done? This is it. He's made his mistake. He realizes how wrong he... Uh, the mistake that he made and he's willing to look past it or do I have to sit here and say all right my report's going to say very simple I think this guy's going to reoffend. I think this guy is going to kill isn't that for courts to decide if I've even done it or not the, the courts <laughs> will decide if uh, what your role is in this in this particular case my role is to write a report for the court to determine what I think your risk level is and that's uh, there's other reports uh, that, the, that my units uh, write as well and that's what our job is. We deal with these types of situations and the, and the reasons why people do this stuff, okay? Um, like I say, this may have been a thing that uh, you just snapped and did something. That stuff happens. Or it may have been something you planned for many months and got some enjoyment out of the plan. I okay? didn't do anything. Well, that's not entirely true either. That is okay. entirely true. I, no. I didn't do anything. No, you can try and cement yourself into that, okay? But at the same time, you're not doing yourself any good by not being truthful here, okay? Because by not being truthful, all you have left is your credibility, Mike. That's all you have left, okay? Um, you're not the only person uh, who's been arrested and charged, okay? And uh, there's no surprises left anymore, okay? The only su it's not even a surprise, it's why this happened. You're also not the only innocent person who's ever been arrested and charged. Well, and that's true. There's been people that uh, have been arrested for things where there's no evidence, but unfortunately in this case there's lots of evidence to determine your role in this crime, okay? Even the steps that you've taken to try and eliminate your involvement, okay? Clearly, uh, clearly, I guess maybe I should explain the evidence a little bit more. Maybe, that, maybe that's uh, my mistake, but uh, because I'm so comfortable in the facts and that I've dealt with all this, maybe I should be make, you know, put you at ease a little bit more. But the reality of it is, as I mentioned earlier, your vehicle is seen on the video, okay? The girl who's, who's on the video who walks away with Tori has been identified, and she's been identified of, as uh, her and Tori being in your car. And the three of you, you and her and Tori, uh, go to the Guelph area, go to the Home Depot, okay? And, and the 
grabbing of, uh, of Tori, there was a, was a planned event that you were going to grab her, you are going to grab a girl, um, but this other person was going to do it, and the other person got the girl, put her in your car, all right? And, and then there's other steps that are taken from there, okay? There's things that happen at Home Depot, there's things, things that happen outside of Guelph, and there's things that happen to Tori, all right, before she's gone, and uh, you're involved in that, and you can't, you can't mask that, you can't change it, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. Because what's happened has happened. I can't turn back the hands of time, and neither can you. Okay? There's uh, there's nothing I can do than turn back the hands of time and say, I wish Mike would have reacted to this situation a little bit differently. Okay? Um, there's been tips come in on you sooner than than recently. There's been there's been a few tips. There's been a few people that have mentioned your name in the past. Um, and when all these tips are put together, then the ball starts rolling. Um, and then the fact that when they dissect these tapes, and they also go in both directions of the tape, they go before they see Tori, and they go after they see Tori. And lo and behold, there's your car, all right? And that starts it as well. So there's, um, and then after, and I think, I don't know if you're aware of it, how much media attention was given, but then they start collecting the videos from the highway, right, to see which vehicles went where. So the, the video is gonna play a very key role videotapes to evidence will play a very key role in this investigation in determining what happened because there's cameras everywhere, right? The average Canadian is on camera eight times a day, whether we go to a gas station, whether we go to Tim Hortons, or we drive through a, a, a light that has a camera. Um, certain communities have cameras, uh, certain weather stations have cameras or news stations. So we will go through as Canadians a minimum of eight cameras a day. So you, you go through cameras as have I. We've all, we've all done that. There's no, no questioning that, that we've all uh, seen these cameras or, or been on these cameras. But there's no doubt in my mind, okay, there's no doubt in my mind that you're involved in the abduction, okay, of Tori. No doubt in my mind at all. I've followed the evidence, I've read the file, okay, there's no doubt in my mind. We're past that, okay. And the only concern or the issue that I have is why you did this. What caused you to do this? Was it something you, like you say, is this something that you've done before and you've been involved in the death of other people and you enjoyed this? Am I sitting across the, the, uh, the desk from Paul Bernardo here? Or am I sitting across from someone who's made a mistake? Okay? And that's going to be the question that's asked of you. All right? I'll get you a bucket there in just a second. You gotta get sick, pull your boots there. Okay? I've seen it before, you're not gonna offend me or bother me. So if you gotta be sick, Mike, go right ahead. Okay. And get you some paper towels or something. If you feel like you're gonna be sick, just uh, just grab the, uh, I'll have the bucket there handy for you, okay? Just leave it right there. You and I need to uh, to uh, have a discussion. This isn't, uh, uh, this isn't a parking ticket, okay? This is, uh, this is reality. Okay, and people are, I've already told you, you know this. People assume the worst until they know the truth. Okay? And people are going to assume the worst of you. Unless you and I sit here and clarify it. Okay, something's pushed you to do this. Okay, you don't, you can't just fly under the radar your entire life. Okay, Mike? It doesn't happen. It's not realistic. Okay? I'm not going to sit and tell you that it happened. Something brings this on. And when you sit and talk to uh, uh, someone who had a troubled life like uh, Michael Breer and just gets pushed into doing this and panics and thinks, what would it be like to, to take a kid and, and touch and rub a kid and then wish you could stop, okay? And people can't, and that's the whole issue here, all right? We can't control every emotion, all right? We can't control some of our urges, some of our thoughts. None of us can, okay? And I can't look you in the face and say, I haven't made a mistake or made a bad decision in life because I have. But the reality of it is, you and I have to accept that and move on, okay? Because I can walk out there and never see you again. Like, I can do that. Right? My job here is done. The job here is done, as you'll find out tomorrow, um, as things start to, uh, to be released. Um, there is no more questions. There is no more long, drawn-out investigations. They're already sending people home to spend time with their families, okay? They're scaling back what's happened because it's been cleared and they know what's happened, and the pieces of evidence have been gathered. So that's, that's reality. I can't downplay that. But you and I need to walk out of here together, okay, with what happened here. You and I have to sit and say, this is what pushed Mike over at the top. This is what pushed Mike to get involved in something like this. Because if we don't, then you sit here on your own and you have to take it.
Okay, and is that necessarily fair? All right. I have to sit here on my own anyways and take this. To an extent you do, yes. <laughs> you have to sit there and decide, am I going to get rid of this and get this off my chest so people understand my side, or am I going to sit there curled up and, uh, and keep it in for, for the rest of my life? All right? You need to be realistic about this, okay? You have no battle plan to deal with this, right? It's happened, it's spun out of control, and you're thinking, okay, if I ever get caught for it, what am I going to do? Well, your, your plan isn't going to work, okay, because you're not built for this shit. This isn't what you're about, okay? You're not some sick bastard, right, that, uh, that sits there and gets enjoyment out of hurting people, all right? So now you have to live with this, okay? And to live with it, one of the first ways, right, it's like if someone's an alcoholic, what's the first thing they have to do? Acknowledge they've got the issue, all right? You have an issue here in that there's overwhelming evidence, compelling evidence, that indicates you're involved in what's happened to Tori, okay? And I can't change that, and you can't change that at this stage. But you need to be honest, and you need to understand. Your credibility, Mike, is all you have left. All you have left from here on in is your credibility. And you sitting here saying nothing doesn't do you a bit of good, because no one's going to know. And then all of a sudden, ten years from now, or five years from now, you decide to say something, who's going to listen? Nobody, okay? This is your chance to say your piece, all right? The evidence is very clear. I'm only giving you bits and pieces. If I sit here from A to Z and tell you all of it, we'll be here all night, okay? Um, and that's really not my my purpose, all right? So you need to understand what's going on, okay? There's evidence to show what happened here, all right? And what caused you to do what you did. That's what's important. What would cause you to get involved in, a, in an incident like this, okay? And like I say, you probably were feeling pretty good about yourself for a while because really, like you said, it wasn't until May 15th that the police had been around to see you. And they'd never said anything about your vehicle being on the video. They, they released the other vehicle instead, all right? But you know, your vehicle's on there. It's plain as day. And uh, um, like I say, if you want, and you can see probably, I'm trying not to out of respect actually for you, but I can sit and get as um, um, graphic as, as, as I want, okay, because none of this stuff bothers me because I've seen it hundreds of times, okay, but if I sit and go over what, uh, what's happened here with Tori, uh, you may not be real happy about it because it's going to cause you to relive all this crap, okay, and maybe you want to because I can tell you I've sat with guys that wanted me to say it again so they could hear what they've accomplished, and I've had that, where they want me to say it two and three times because they get a rush out of that. I don't think that's you, okay? You're not some sick guy, okay? I'm not sitting across from Paul Bernardo, okay? I know that, and I know people that have sat across from him, okay? And I know two officers that have in different stages of their lives, okay? And I know what he's all about. You're not that guy, all right? But at the same time, you can't just sit here and say, well, I hope this all goes away, right? This isn't like a list your girlfriend gives you to say, here's a list of things to do. Can you go pick up a few things at the, at the grocery store for me? get some gas. This isn't what that is, okay? This is a lot more serious than a to-do list. There's no doubt in my mind, okay, that you've done this to Tori. No doubt in my mind. We're past that, okay? And there's no doubt to me, I believe, I truly believe it's out of character. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's out of character. But Mike, I can't sit and talk to you and pretend that uh, um, nothing's happened, okay? I can't turn back time, okay? You've been involved in this thing, Along the way, there's been some uh, some decisions made that I would like to think you would take back, okay? But again, I uh, I believe this is out of character from, for, for you. I could be wrong. Like, I, I don't think you feel, you feel very good about this. I don't think you feel very good about what happened to this girl. And I'm sure that every day you've had to deal with this stress, all right? Now we need to understand what pushed you to this point. What caused you to do this? Like, what, would, what would cause you, who's been flying under the radar, you're actually, you're actually a quite popular person when uh, when the investigators talk to people. You're a very well-liked individual. There's not a bunch of people say a lot of bad shit about you, all right? There are some people that report that you might be involved in this, but there's not a lot of people that are sitting there saying bad shit about you, all right? So that tells me that you have some people that respect you and some people that like you. But that also tells me, that, again, that this must be out of character for you, okay? As soon as I sat and... Uh, talk about people that have been involved in uh, killing more than one person, you get disgusted, okay? You may well be disgusted with me, or you may be disgusted with the thought of the whole thing, okay? But that's not what you want to hear. You're disgusted by that. What does that tell me? It tells me that you're not the type of person that wants to go and kill a bunch of people, okay? 
but we need to deal with reality. And the reality of it is your credibility is all you have left at this point. If you sit there and say nothing, everybody's going to assume the worst, okay? And you may be painted with a picture that you're not real happy with, okay? And I'm the only one that feels like sitting in here with you, right? There's no investigators lined up in here sitting with you. Why do you think that is? Right? Because they've been working at this for, for weeks, okay? They're tired and they've been away from their families and none of them want to come in here and talk to you, okay? I have no issue with it. I'm neutral. I don't have these issues. I haven't been away from my family. I don't like talking to you. Like, I've talked to people that have uh, been involved in things far worse than what they're saying you did here. Far worse, okay? And I can sit and list the things that I've been involved in. There are people who have done things that have been a threat to our national security, terrorism in Canada, um, or I've dealt with people that have uh, been involved in murdering more than three people, all right? I've been involved with people who have abducted and taken the life of children. I've, I've been involved, in I've dealt with many people who are sex offenders that habitually and repeatedly uh, touch and molest children. I've dealt with that. It does That stuff doesn't bother me, okay? But what's going on here is, is that you're just in there, you're just a big uh, bundle of nerves, and you don't know what to do. You don't know whether to sit here, shake, shit, puke, you don't know what to do. But the reality of it is, at the end of the day, the evidence is the evidence, okay? And the evidence clearly shows you're responsible for the abduction of Tori, okay? And I also know that she's no longer with us, okay? And you're responsible for that too, okay? And there's, a, there's a sexual component to this as well. So you might want to sit and get this off your chest and go through your side with me, all right? Because if I just walk away, at minimum, that's what people are going to think, at minimum, all right? When we sit and uh, look at uh, Michael Briere, when he was in Toronto, I don't know these people. Okay. Well, what happened was Holly Jones was an 11-year-old girl. She's abducted in Toronto, okay? And there was a big search for her, and her mother was on the news repeatedly pleading for her safety. Um, and what Michael Brer had done, as I had mentioned, is he was watching pornography on, on the Internet. On his Internet at home, he kept looking at it, looking at it. He had a, this desire as he saw it to get more and more. So then he decides after watching this for a period of time that he wants to touch a kid. So he goes out, and he finds a kid and brings her into his apartment. She goes willingly. He talks her into it, and she goes, and he and he does some sexual things to her. But then he panics because he's thinking, "Holy crap! She can identify me. She knows where I live. What do I do?" Okay, he causes her death. And later on, it takes a bit of time, but the investigators track him down, and he is arrested because of the evidence. And the first thing he does when he gets on the camera, is he looks at the camera and says, "I apologize. Here's what I did." And he outlines what happened with the pornography, and then he actually outlines some, he gives actually some parents some safety tips for their kids. He says, if you don't want your kid to be abducted, here's what you need to do. And he tells them what, to, what for what kids should be doing, okay? And what happened to him? You haven't even heard about him. Why is that? Because he apologized and moved on. That's why you've never heard of him, okay? But you've heard of Paul Bernardo, who didn't apologize, right? Everyone knows who Paul Bernardo is, right? That happened in southwestern Ontario. Everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows who Carla is, right? And is this a Paul and Carla thing? That's going to be asked, okay? Make no mistake, I'm not making this shit up, okay? I was involved with the Green Ribbon Task Force, which was the Paul and Carla thing in the 90s, okay? Um, I had all kinds of involvement from the time it was unsolved to the time it was solved. But no one's ever heard of Michael Breer for the reason I just told you, all right? But they sure as hell know who these other guys are, right? And it's the same as it's the same situation you've been in. If someone, uh, a friend of yours, lies to you, or someone rips you off for, for fifty bucks or twenty bucks, right? And you catch them. You say, "Listen, why did you take my money?" And the guy says, "I didn't take your money, right?" You're pretty pissed off with that guy. You know what, Mike? I took your money. I apologize. I was, I was gonna I was gonna pay you back, but you came and I panicked, so I took your money. You can live with that, all right? But you have some explaining to do. Okay, that's reality. I can't change that. Okay. If this is something that got out of control, that you just planned on taking her and you thought you were going to put her back or just take her for a ride, that's fine. If get out of hand, then we need to talk about that, okay? You need to sit and explain that and say why, okay? If not, then I say people think the worst until they know, all right? That's human nature. You and I have both done that in our lives. If we don't know the facts, all right, people can think the worst. And this is what you have to deal with, okay? This is reality. There's uh, even steps that, uh, you know, things that you've done to your vehicle to try and conceal the crime. Um, 
like I say, you just can't, there's no magical stuff that washes away DNA or gets rid of DNA. Okay? And keeping in mind a lot of the stuff that you did is on cameras and other spots. Okay? I mean Home Depot has all kinds of cameras, okay? Um, parking lots and inside the store. So um, even if you don't go into the Home Depot store, there's still cameras in the parking lot for security reasons and for thefts and other reasons. So this case primarily is solved through cameras, all right? But also there's other things. I mean, uh, you didn't do this alone, as I've told you. I never told you who was uh, who was with you, though I know. And uh, I know uh, I know what her her role was in this. Okay, and I also know it was your uh, was your vehicle. But I can sit and write this out. I can draw this thing out from the time Tori is picked up to the time that her end has come. And I can tell you that stuff. All right. What good is it coming from me? The investigators are going to do that. Okay. My, my role is to sit and determine what the hell happened here. What caused you to get involved in something like this? And that's all my role is. And if I walk away saying, I don't know, don't know what caused it, then that's the way it goes. Too bad, right? That's, that's just the way it goes. But if I sit with you and determine what happened and how this got off the rails, then you're not sitting there alone, all right? Because uh, you may be a lonely person for a period of time until people understand what the hell happened, okay? And the person that uh, um, that uh, judges you, the people that judge you, will all be people that have made mistakes themselves. But human nature is very simple. We all appreciate when people are honest with us, and when we all admit our mistakes and and uh, and acknowledge when things get out of hand. There's nothing wrong with that. But then there's also times when uh, um, when we're not tolerant of people that won't uh, won't be honest in the situation. It's not like I'm not trying to belittle this or make it uh, seem insignificant I know what I'm asking here okay I know that I'm not asking you to do something easy I know that okay and I, I know just because I I know the case facts and I've sat in, in, uh, in rooms for many hours with people under circumstances like yours or worse uh, I'm not trying to downplay it or minimize it or be like some kind of smart ass but at the same time you have to understand not only is there a ring of truth of what I'm saying and a ring of experiences to what I'm saying because I've been there and been around it but there is no other way you don't have any other options there's nothing else that you can do to change what's happened to her we can't turn back time however we can explain how things got off the rails whether it was something that happened slowly or just went right off the rails right from the from the beginning and uh, it can be as simple as you driving up the highway and think somebody spots you with her in your car and you make a series of decisions all right I mean, that's, that's happened in the past where people have picked someone up and they weren't sure what they were going to do. Uh, somebody saw them, and guess what happens, right? They panic. Um, I can give you another example of that because it was in the news recently. I don't know if you know it. It was a case that was 38 years old. Okay, it happened in northern Ontario up by North Bay. And the guy was actually living in London. He moved away 38 years after the, uh, the death of this 12-year-old uh, girl. Through technology and uh, DNA, they were able to uh, to solve it. Have you ever been heard of that case? Why? Because the guy said, "Yeah, he was driving up the road. He took this kid, and as they're driving up the road, he sees a person. He grabs her by the head and pulls her head down the dash of his truck. And someone saw him do it, but didn't know who the person was. And and uh, years later, he gets convicted of it. He acknowledges, "Yeah, you know what? I screwed up. And you've never even heard of this guy." That happened in London last last year. That happened in October. That it was a great big media event. That it happened, and it was done in court in uh, in December. And the whole thing was done. There was media attention to that. But nobody even uh, see it wasn't even on your uh, on your radar. Okay, so these things do happen. All right, whether you don't hear about them or not, uh, these things happen. Why do you think the OPP has a behavioral sciences section? This is all the stuff that we deal with. Okay. We deal with occurrences that are unusual. We deal with situations that aren't regular situations. And that's not what this is. This isn't a regular situation. This is a couple of people that made a series of, uh, of decisions that hopefully they understand aren't quite right and that they feel bad about and are willing to uh, you know, apologize and uh, you know, accept the fact that, uh, hey, I made, you know, I made a mistake and uh, I wish I could take it back. But uh, um, I'm just sitting there, I'm thinking, Am I dealing with someone who's got all these uh, um, all these issues? Am I dealing with someone who people are going to think is some kind of monster? Or am I dealing with someone who let something get out of control? Okay, 
and I got excited and couldn't control it. I think that it got out of hand. If you're asking my opinion, I'm telling you. And I'm on video saying it. I think this situation got out of hand. That's my opinion. And uh, I believe that, okay? I don't think that you're some kind of monster. If I did, you'll find me pretty candid. You'll find that I'll come right out and tell you, Mike, okay? I don't think that, okay? I think this got out of control. I think it got out of hand, okay? Are you some kind of monster? Or did you make a mistake here? You made a mistake, right? This is a mistake, right, Mike? You take it back if you could. This is a mistake, right, Mike? You take it back. If you could turn back the hands of time, Mike, would you take this? Would you do this a little bit different, Mike? I'm talking to you. If you could turn back the hands of time, you're not some monster. You made a mistake, right? You take this back if you could. This is a mistake, Mike. You need to deal with this. I am okay? no monster. I know but I did monster. not do what you think no, I did. I know you did. We're past that. Okay. No. We're past that, Mike. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know you're not a monster. If you did, if I if I thought you're a monster, I would tell you. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't just walk out. I would spend some time with you. If I thought you're a monster, just because I want to see what makes you tick. But you're not a monster. All right. This thing has consumed you. Look at you. Right. You can barely eat or drink. You haven't touched your donut. Right. Why is that? Because your guts are eating yourself up inside. Okay, you can't sit and say um, that you're innocent. Did all, what's the first thing you did when you got in here? You just laid down and curled up, right? It's all over. You know it's over. Okay, you know it's done. Okay, you don't have to be an expert in body language. All you've done is lay around in the fetal position since you've been here. That's not how innocent people act. That's not how people that are falsely accused of something act. It's, it's the last that it, thing it's they do. It's possibly that it's, it's freezing. I haven't eaten since noon. It couldn't be that this is all just a huge. Huge shock to me. No, it yes. couldn't have been any of that at all. It's probably all of that, but it's also the fact that you're you're involved in it. It's probably all of that, Mike. Okay, the fact that maybe you haven't eaten that much, and maybe you are cold. There's no question. The first thing you said to me was you're cold and hungry, so that's why I grabbed you that stuff. Okay, and I'll, I'm willing to accept that. Maybe that is part of the issue. Okay, but there is a bigger, there is a larger issue here. Okay, and it's the issue of the evidence and the issue that you're involved in this. Okay, and we can't change that. Um, but there's no uh, um, no problem with uh, um, acknowledging that. Like I say, nothing's going to change now. I mean, uh, uh, you have. Uh, I mean, it's up to you. There's a lot of things I'd be willing to sit and do with you if you're willing to do it. If you want to sit and you and I discuss a, an apology, I would sit and do that. Whether it's a verbal one where you say you're sorry or whether I, we write one out, um, I'd be willing to do that. If uh, you want to go for a drive with me, and you drive around and explain things, I would sit and do that. Okay? I have no issue with that, Mike. I have no um, uh, ill will, anger towards you. I have none. You don't, uh, you don't make me mad. You don't upset me, nothing like that, okay? Um, the only issue I have is I don't fully understand, and I acknowledge it. I don't have to come in here as a behavioral scientist and tell you that I don't understand something, but I'm telling you that, okay? And I don't understand how you can fly under the radar for 28 years, okay? and get involved in this. Though it does happen, all right? It does, it happens actually all the time um, where this stuff happens. Uh, again, I've actually given you a couple examples already of people that didn't have, uh, you know, real dealings with the police and uh, get involved in this stuff where they abduct somebody. That happens all the time. Sometimes it's a, it's a simple, one of the most common ways uh, an abduction happens is through hitchhiking. Or someone's hitchhiking, Someone picks them up and they realize, oh shit, and they just decide to keep them for a period of time. That happens all the time. Happens in Ontario, happens across Canada, okay? This one's a little bit different because, you know, the girls uh, picked up the, uh, well, Terry, let's call it spade a spade. Terry picks up uh, Tori, brings her to your car, and you guys drive away. That's reality, okay? Um, can't change that. Uh, that's a different kind of abduction, and I, and I acknowledge it. It's unusual, okay? It's an unusual kind of, uh, of abduction, and uh, it's not, uh, it's not uh, normal. Um, I don't know how much you know about uh, Terry, um, but uh, anyways, she's involved in this, we know that. Um, she's acknowledged this, we know that. Uh, she's already confessed and apologized to this, uh, been there, done that. Um, so there's no real surprises here, okay? The only issue is how the hell did this spin out? Well, what's your side of it? Because, I, I mean, we already know hers. But what's your side of it? And that's what I'm here to sit with you and talk to you about. Because I wasn't the person that talked to, uh, to Terry. The other, the other uh, officers did.
I volunteered here to come here and shoot the shit with you because I've talked to people in worse situations than you, okay? And like I say, you've been pretty respectful with me. Um, you're not giving me a hard time. You're not being rude to me. Um, so I'll sit with you because, uh, um, but you know, the reality of it is I can walk away and you're going to sit and deal with this on your own for the rest of your life, okay? Um, I'm here to tell you that I'm pointing out some obvious things to you. All I've really done is point out common sense and put some experiences I've had in behavioral sciences. But the reality of it is we both know people think the worst until they know. And we both know that uh, people, someone to fly on the radar for 28 years and then be involved in something like this, something's caused it. Okay? So all I've really done is point out to the obvious to you. All right? You're a smart guy. You're, you're not... You're nobody's fool. You know. You know the situation. You know you're in a in a tough spot. But there's a, um, there's a lot of things here that we just can't sit and ignore. Okay. And you know, you just sit and say, "Wow, well, you know, it didn't really happen." What we're just we're just too far past that. It's unrealistic. Okay. Maybe uh, a month or so ago, when the investigation was new, you might be able to pull that, but you can't now. It's just uh, um, all you're doing is hurting your own uh, your own credibility. And again, this is your opportunity to uh, to say your piece, um, but you got some pretty serious explaining to do here, okay? Uh, in the big picture, now without me, if I just leave you here, you got some stuff that you need to explain. Um, I don't have to explain it; you do. Okay, I've already told you what my opinion is, and my opinion is something caused you to do this, okay? Because um, there's little things. If I just sit and if I just say a sentence or a word, right, I can make this thing seem a lot worse than it is, right? I could just sit here and say, you know what, Mike? I said, I'm going to leave here. You can spend the next little while figuring out how you're going to explain the purchase of garbage bags. Okay, well, you have this kid with you. I can explain that. Okay? I can explain it because I've been around this type of stuff. How are you going to do it on your own? Okay? Um, I've acknowledged already what my thoughts are of you. Okay? I've told you that from the beginning that this is out of character for you, okay? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's why you don't want to talk. Because maybe you're thinking, hey, you know what, Chris, you're wrong. You know, maybe I've done this before. Maybe I plan on doing plan on doing it again, all right? I don't think that. But, I mean, you could be sitting here playing me, right? How the hell would I know, okay? I can tell you that I don't think that's the case because I've sat across from a lot of people, again, that have been through stuff a lot, to, a lot worse than you. Um, you made a mistake, man. Deal with it and we move on. Here's what happened. I'm not saying for a second that you sat and watched a bunch of pornography and that's what forced it, pushed you to do this. That's not what I'm saying at all. All I'm doing is I'm drawing a comparison to another case that I was involved in that was very similar. Okay, but then you you in fact helped me by pointing out that you don't even know who these people are because nobody became insignificant in the end because the person who did it was honest about it and said what happened and I actually apologized and then offered uh, uh, tips to parents to safeguard their children. Um, I'm not asking you to do that unless you want it. I'm not asking you to do anything you don't want to do, but I am asking you to be truthful. That's the only thing I'm asking of you, okay? Uh, because the truth is the only thing you have at this point. Your credibility, Mike, is all you have left, okay? You sit here two, three years from now and say, okay, I got a story I'd like people to listen. Who's going to listen? Why would they listen, okay? You don't have the credibility once all the, the versions are out there and, uh, and the evidence is all out there. And I, oh, geez, I see what the evidence is now. Now I can make my story match the evidence. Nobody cares, right, because you have no credibility. At this stage here, you have credibility because you can acknowledge your side and acknowledge what happened, and then you can move on from there, all right? And that's the first piece. It's the same I told you earlier. If someone has a drinking problem, is to acknowledge it and move on, okay? Here's what happened. I'm sorry, and I moved on. And if you're not comfortable with apologizing, maybe not everybody is comfortable saying they're sorry or admitting they made a mistake, that's fine. I'm not going to ask you to do something that you're not comfortable with. However, um, I am concerned that you're just going to sit here and, oh, well, I'm going to take a chance. Maybe I'll just leave it and it'll all work itself out. I'm well past that, Mike. This is not going to work itself out, okay? We're past that. You need to acknowledge what's caused you to do this, okay? And if it's because you're loaded up on oxys and it seemed like a good idea at the time, then maybe we better talk about that. Okay, because it appears to me that half of Woodstock is on oxys based on what I've seen from this investigation. So if you're part of the norm in this town and you made a series of bad decisions because of it, then we better talk about it. And people will be an awful lot more sympathetic to that than you just sitting there saying nothing. Okay, because there's a very large percentage of people in this town 
that are on oxys. Okay, and in the big picture, that will become part of an inquiry as well as to why is it it's so easy to get oxys in this town, and why are there so many people? Because percentage-wise, I travel all over Canada. All right, I'm based in the headquarters, and really I travel all over Canada for different cases. I've never seen oxy like this in my life. Okay. And other seasoned investigators have come on this case have never seen oxy like this in their lives. There's a problem with oxy in this town, okay? Very much so, okay? So we can't change that. So if you've had too many oxys, you've been strung on them too long, then that's fine, okay? And I can tell you all kinds of stories of people that are addicted to them, okay? Sometimes it's people that are using it for recreation, for a different type of high, different type of drug. But often it's hard-working people that get an injury or get in a car accident and they get addicted to them, right? That happens, okay, for the pain. Um, but it's highly addictive, right? I think uh, if you review the stats, you'll find that people will, who are on it will tell you it's more addictive than cigarettes, it's more addictive than alcohol, all right? So if you've been strung out on oxys for a period of a couple months, and then you made a bad decision, and then all of a sudden at the time it seemed good, like it's like when you're drunk and you pick up a girl, that was a great idea, right? Until you figure out later she was married, or a stalker, I've had that, and uh, you realize that was a bad decision, okay? That's all this is, okay? Mike is, is, is a bit of abuse of oxys, then you and I should talk about that now, all right? Because it's gonna be easier for you and I to explain that to this community than anything else, all right? Because the percentages, you know, you know how many people are on oxys around here, right? The police know how many people are on oxys. They had a rough idea before. They can tell you who has oxys, right? And they can tell you who's supplying them, right? Just through this investigation. So the oxy, um, issue will dry itself up, but there's also a very good chance that there's going to be a separate public inquiry into the oxycon use. Who's prescribing this shit? How come there's so much of it on the street? All right? And how can somebody get go pick up a prescription for an injured mother or father or relative and just be given these oxys, right? And how many of these oxys actually make it to the person that they're prescribed to? So there's an outlying issue here, okay? There's a secondary issue with oxys in this town. And if that's what this is, you had too many oxys and you made a series of bad decisions, then why don't you and I talk about that? Because we can already show that the victim's parents are using oxys, right? They've admitted that themselves, right? So who are they to judge you, all right, when you're doing the same thing they are? And maybe they're doing it more, all right? Um, I'm prepared to sit and listen that you didn't brainstorm all this stuff and that uh, this got out of control, like I am, or I wouldn't be here, okay? I am prepared to listen to that, okay? But you have to you have to also acknowledge that there's a problem, okay? And it's just like drinking. If you're an alcoholic, the, sad, the, the worst part of that is you're out driving a car, right? And that's one of the worst things with, with alcoholics is the drunk driving. But you have to acknowledge it and move on. But you're no different than a large pe percentage of people in this town, okay? And however you got hooked on them, was it, whether it was through recreation uh, or it was fun or it was a source of income, then that's fine, okay? Because when you sit back, and I'm quite a bit older than you, and you go back, when I was in high school, if someone dealt a hard drug, they got many years in jail. They got years in jail, minimum five years to be deal drugs. When have you ever heard of anyone getting five years in jail for anything, right? They don't. So drug use, there's more drug traffickers out there now than there's ever been. And if one gets arrested for drug trafficking, two or three pick up that person's clientele and expand. So if that's all this is, is some, uh, so a series of poor decisions uh, through the use of Oxycontins, then why aren't you and I talking about that, right? That's what you and I need to talk about. This is Oxycontins, and I've sat here and discussed how people want to draw parallels to a Paul Bernard or some kind of monster. That's not right, okay? But only you and I can get to that, Mike, okay? Only you and I can get there. Because if that's all this is, is, is the abuse of Oxycontins to the point that it messed your head up and you grabbed this kid, then we better talk about that. Because maybe there's a panic after you grab the kid. I didn't grab any kid. Well, the kid was put in your car, all right, by Terry. So if you didn't grab her yourself, that's fine. We certainly drove with that kid in your car, okay? And that's the issue, and you're on video doing it, okay? So if you didn't grab her yourself, that's fine, okay? Uh, I can live with that. But what we have to do is explain what happened after the kid was in your car. And I'm willing to sit and do that with you, okay? Because your credibility is all you're going to have left. And this might be the only uh, logical explanation is drug use, okay? drug abuse. Um, you're not the creative oxycontin, you're not the first person to use it, and you're not going to be the last. However, it will dry up in this community in the near future um, as a result of this. But um, 
And I, and I never said for a second that you went and took that kid from the school because you didn't. But that kid was taken from that school, all right, by Terry and put in your car, okay? And you were there and, uh, and you were part of when the kid was dri driven to Guelph, okay, in the Home Depot. Uh, and then from there, uh, the kid, uh, into the demise of the kid. But this is the stuff we need to explain, okay? This is the stuff we need to acknowledge. I need you to be like you were, Mike, when I first came in and you clarified, because it was me that screwed up. I was the one that said break into a car because it was my terminology. You need to be the one that corrects me, okay? And you need to be the one that said, like I I said that you're involved in this abduction. Well, you know what, maybe I better be a little more clear with my words. Um, Terry grabbed that kid from the school, okay? We know that um, for a number of ways. Um, there's a whole host of issues. Well, uh, plus the fact, well, she matches the comps and she's on the video and it's later determined to be her and then she actually subsequently admits to it anyways. But um, there's all kinds of evidence of that. And your car was on that video at the time. Uh, it's a unique car, right? It's a nice looking car. It's got a unique uh, spoiler on it and it did grab the attention of the video camera. There's no question. I mean, uh, your car's nicer than mine. My, car, my car wouldn't be on there. But uh, um, that's reality. These are the things that you need to talk about to get your side out now. Because two years, no one's gonna give a rat's ass. No one's gonna give a shit, right? Two years from now, because you know what? Mike had his chance and he didn't say anything. Nobody can control your destiny now but you, okay? I can. I mean, I've already told you, I've already put my cards on the table. I'm already gonna walk out of there and say, I've spent my time with, uh, with Mike and I don't think he's a monster. I don't think he's gonna kill two or three people in his life, okay? That's my, I'm a threat assessor. That's what I do, I work in behavioral sciences, my job is supposed to be to determine the future. What's Mike's threat when he leaves here? Mike's had his opportunity to say his piece, okay? And uh, he's choosing not to say it. But at the same time, you've also been uh, uh, polite and uh, enough and, uh, um, I don't know what the other one, polite and you've been, you've been able, actually, you've been able to point out if I don't word something. That's, I have no issue with that. In fact, I'm, I'm rather glad you did because it shows that you're paying attention and you understand. I want you to take this serious. Right? I don't want you to think that uh, this is all uh, uh, this is all going to go away because it won't. And you have to acknowledge that. You have to know that. You're smart enough to know this isn't just going to go away. Right? You can't just wake up tomorrow and pretend it didn't happen. But what you need to be comfortable with is tell the truth about what you what your role is, how this thing spun out of control like it did, and how a guy who's flown under the radar for 28 years ends up in this situation with all this overwhelming evidence implicating him to this crime, okay? That's the issue. Uh, again, I don't think that, uh, uh, I told you that, I don't think you're some kind of monster, but we've gotten off the rails here. Somehow you got off the rails and got yourself into this thing, okay? And if it wasn't your idea, then I wouldn't mind hearing that as well, okay? But it's gotta be your words, like not mine, okay? You don't need me to draw you a map or uh, draw a little story of what happened from the time that uh, she's picked up to the time that uh, she's gone. Um, I don't have to do that. The evidence is going to do that. Um, but if that's all this is, is, is because of the oxys and uh, nothing else, then why don't we talk about that? I've talked a lot about is Is it the oxys? Is that what the problem is here? Is that what's caused you to get involved in this? I've taken oxys. What's that? Taken oxys? Yeah, I know you've taken oxys, yeah. So that's what's caused you to make these, this bad decision, or just what caused this poor decision to be made, or where it's spun out of control, that's what I'm asking you there. If it's the oxys, then that's what we deal with. Like I said, there's a large percentage of people in this town that are in oxys. Um, when I went out to get these coffee, there was two standing in front of Tim Hortons. I would almost, well, maybe if they weren't on oxys, they were on something, all right? There's a lot of zombies in this town. There's a lot of people that are abusing this drug, okay? And if that's what it is, and you joined a large uh, population of this town using oxys, and you made a bad decision. Uh, that's that's reality because these people that are taking the oxys make bad decisions every day. They lie every day. They manipulate every day, right? That's because that's how they get the, the drug to begin with. Sometimes they may have uh, bills they haven't paid. They may have drug debts that they they owe. They may have to fly under the radar for a little while and keep a low profile because they owe money. But the yeah. only reason I'm sitting here is because I got involved with bad people. Yes, I agree with that. Probably worse people than you've ever imagined in your life, all right? Um, yes, you did. Yeah, you did. I don't know if you know how many of them that were bad or just how bad were they. I don't know at what stage 
you knew they were bad. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you a question here. And I'd like you to answer it. It's not going to implicate you in anything. Um, did you have any idea how bad these people were? No. Do you get? Do you, do you think you do now, or you, have you? Was there a point when you caught on how bad, or I actually don't have to answer that. Um, but you know, I mean, you, you've got in with some tough people. All right, I know that. Why do you think I've been sitting here going on and on, like you know, you're flying under the radar and stuff? Okay, because this isn't you. All right, if you're one of these bad people, would we not know that? Would we not have a great big sheet of issues with you of incidents, right? Of perhaps a violent crime, a drug crime, maybe home invasions to get drugs. Don't have any of those, okay? Don't have any of this, all right? But this is what you need to explain. These bad people and what their role is, okay? Because this is your chance. You've done all you can for these people. And now because of these people, you're sitting here, all right? With the last chance. This is the only time you're going to have any credibility. So why aren't all these people sitting here? Because they already were today. Out, and this isn't done yet, all right? But there's already been people in here today, and there's actually people in the other interview rooms as we speak. They've been cycled through all night, okay? And I will tell you this, and uh, actually I'll put it on a piece of paper and I'll sign it. Every person we've had in here today has confessed, every single one of them, today, all right? Because one piece of evidence leads to another, which leads to another until, bang, it happens, okay? It starts out with a video, starts out with some other information coming in, and then it starts out with, uh, okay, outlining the evidence to one person. Every person in here today has saved their ass, okay, every single one of them. And guess who the, guess who the only person is that the threat assessor in the behavioral sciences guys interviewing? Just you. Okay. Everybody saved their ass. Everybody said their piece, man. Everybody do, had their chance. How do these people... It's not saving their ass. No, you're probably right. They said their piece. That's probably a better way to put it. Everyone said their side of the story. Well, they had the chance now before someone else could say it for them. That's maybe a better way to put it. But every one of them has today. And that's reality. Um, another kind of an interesting tidbit, though, too. Um, they were pretty, um, I wouldn't say surprised, but they didn't know where you were for... Uh, earlier in the day, and then they found you later on, but uh, they weren't sure where you were or what you were doing. But, uh, um, the police, the police, they were looking for you earlier today. But, uh, no, the people have been in here already, uh, Mike, and, and I mean, no one's going anywhere. The ones that are here are arrested and staying, but, uh, well, some have gone to jail already, but some are uh, in holding and some of other court dates and stuff, but, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe you find this offensive and you do just say so you so. have people like Tara and Rodney there are people who are locked up Rodney's not locked up um, what are they gonna say oh Tara's not locked up either no I'm sorry I thought you said Terry no Tara's not locked up I know Terry's locked up but Tara's not sorry um, and Rodney's not but I'm, if, if they're supposed to be, then, like I say, this is, uh, you've done all you can for these people, okay? And uh, I have some concerns about, uh, uh, about this. Uh, and actually, I'm going to finish off what I was going to say. You correct If I'm wrong, you tell me. But um, do you think maybe you're in over your head a little bit on this? Are you starting to feel like maybe you're the less experienced person from a criminal standpoint than these other people? I can say I don't belong here. Well, I can say I can say you don't belong here for a number of reasons. The guy, like you, shouldn't be in here, okay? But something's happened that you're involved in this thing that you're here, and this is not going away. All right? None of these people have come forward today saying, "Hey, save Mike." Okay, that has not happened. In fact, I think you can envision that the opposite has happened, right? So now we better clarify some of this stuff, okay? Because uh, now is an opportunity for us to clarify what many people have thought has been going on from day one, okay? But again, you've done all you can for these people, all right? And now you're sitting here, all right? And uh, this is your chance, because I'm not coming back to you tomorrow or a week from now. There's no point, okay? Because there really isn't. Um, you're given your chance, and if, uh, if you're not willing to take it, there's your opportunity, then it's up to you, okay? Uh, everything stays the same. The, the, um, the charges you're currently facing, the, the situations that you have, the court dates, all that stays the same whether you and I talk or not. 
If I walk out of here, that's the end of it for you. Um, but I'm willing to listen because there is more of this story, okay? And I know there is. And uh, and I can actually I can sit and tell you where the issues are that bug you. I mean, if you want me to do that. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that uh, there is evidence out there, compelling evidence that links you to this situation. And that's what we need to get to the bottom of. Is how the hell did you get mixed up in this? All right? And I'm willing to listen to that. And I'm willing to have you... Actually, I appreciate it when you correct me or clarify stuff with me because it shows we're having a conversation, okay, and you're paying attention to me, all right? And I appreciate that you're paying attention to me, and I'm paying attention to you, okay? But we have to have a two-way communication between the two of us. Um, what should we be talking about? What do you think is going to... What, what can we talk about uh, in relation to this that uh, uh, takes some of the heat off of you? I don't know what you're asking. Okay. What I'm asking is this. Um, th th there's some info. You, you don't feel that you should be here. And I think we've acknowledged that. And I, I don't know if I was being rude, but I think you're in over your head. And I think you've been working or hanging around people that are far more experienced as criminals. You've been hanging around with criminals. Let's, let's, call it, let's, let's, be, let's call it spade a spade. You've been hanging around with criminals. And there's really no indication that you are a major criminal. But you've been hanging around with some. Right? And whether you've been manipulated, um, that's up to you to clarify. But um, if that's what's happened, then you and I should talk about that. If you think that there's a discussion that we should have about uh, uh, Tara, then we should have it. Okay? Now's the time for you and I to have that conversation as opposed to way down the road. Uh, if there's a conversation that we should be having about Rodney, now is the time. Uh, or Terry. I'm sitting here willing to listen. All right, I'm not going there, all right? I can get myself another tea, I can get a water bottle, I can just sit and talk with you, okay? Mike, but you've got to you've got to you've got to kind of meet me halfway here, all right? And I'm willing to do that with you, okay? I'm willing to sit with you tonight. I'm not in any rush, but at the same time, um, it's got to be uh, where it doesn't make you look bad either. It's got to be where your credibility shows that, hey, Mike's here and he's telling the truth, okay? So what I'm saying is if you're going to sit with me, I don't want to make you part way. I want you to be straight.